Um, hello. Uh, at the um, start of the 1980s, obviously, there was this big momentum on the left of Labour and it was building up specifically, mainly around you. Um, obviously, after the, the 1981 uh deputy leadership election where sadly you lost by was it about half a percent something like that um it sort of tailed off what do you sort of think the lessons are that the left can learn from the 1980s well what happened really was the labor party moved to the right when i stood as deputy leader i hadn't expected i'd get anything like the amount of support i did i was defeated by less than half a percent and then after that, the party moved to the right with Kinnock and uh, then uh, uh, Blair and so on. And out of that came New Labour. And New Labour was really a mini Conservative Party. I think what happened very simply was Blair and his colleagues discussed the prospects for the elections in the future. They see, said that, that we had been defeated many times and we'll only ever win if we adopt Mrs Thatcher's economic policy. And uh, so uh, that was what New Labour was about. When Blair was elected leader, he said, New Labour is a new political party. Well, I never joined New Labour. I'm a socialist in the Labour Party, of which there are some. But the Labour Party is a coalition of forces. And I think that that New Labour venture did um, entrench the power of the right in the party. And then, you see, if you doubt what I say, when Mrs. Thatcher was asked her greatest achievement, she once said New Labour. She saw New Labour as the victory of her ideas over our ideas. And that was why we lost in 2010. I don't know if that answers your question. But... 110%. Thank okay. You. Thanks for coming, Mr. Ben. I just wanted to ask you what your... Um, what you think your greatest achievement was in your career? What's my greatest achievement in your career? Well, uh, people ask that, but you see, most political, so-called political achievements are are collective. It's like saying uh, to a general, "What's your greatest achievement?" She said, "I won the war." Well, generals don't win wars; they just lead people who do win wars. <coughs> I would be proudest if, when I die, they say, "Tony Ben, he encouraged us." I was much encouraged when I was young, and I think encouragement is the most important thing you can do. Somebody comes along with a problem, you encourage them as to how that can be resolved. So I don't know if it answers your question, but it is my answer to it. How far do you think Ed Miliband will be uh, successful in distancing himself from New Labour, and will he manage to win votes by doing so? Well, uh, I've known Ed Miliband for a long time. When he was a student, he came and worked in my office, did work experience. And he's a very clever man. I voted for him as leader of the Labour Party. And I think people trust him. And I think that when you come to the general election, trust in your leaders is a very, very important factor. So I hope very much that he does do well and that we win. But uh, even if we don't, I think uh, we should always look back on the Miliband period as one where we were free to discuss what we thought we should do, but we didn't engage in personal antagonism of a kind that's done us damage in the past. Um, do you think that class politics is still relevant, and do you think any of the political parties actually represent modern classes? Well, I mean, the socialist analysis is very simple that the argument is not between your nation and foreign nations, or between one religion or another religion. It is between the conflict between the majority of the world's population who create the world's wealth, and the minority in every generation who own the world's wealth. And that is what the so-called class war is about. It's about turning the political argument into an argument between rich and poor. And I think that is an argument which is a, a, a attracting people's interest because it so obviously corresponds with the truth. I mean, last week we had a cut in uh, further jobs in pursuit of government's economic policy and a reduction of tax on the wealthy. Now, that could only be justified on the grounds that this is a party representing the wealthy against the, the rest. And I think that is the argument that holds the Labour Party together because 
that's what people know in their heart is really what it's about. And anything other than that is a bit of a diversion. You see, when I was young, I remember a teacher telling me there are only two sorts of people in the world, the British and foreigners. And there were an awful lot of foreigners. And that wasn't what it was about. It was about the slave owners and the slaves, about the men and the women, and all the great arguments have always been about issues that raise questions of economic interest or class.